Okay, so back to work. We've got the gearbox out and happy to get it out, really. <laughs> Took a bit of time, but it's all right. A little bit heavy and stuff, but it's all right. Now, you're going to need some sort of degreaser to start cleaning it up. Now, the issue with my particular clutch was that um, the, the slave was leaking gearbox fluid into the gearbox area and getting onto the clutch. And that's what really made it degrade and die out. So after I pulled out this clutch, I had a good cleaning job to go through. Um, my flywheel was perfectly fine. There was no knocking, no banging from it, nothing like that. So I didn't have to change my flywheel, but you have to make sure you get it diagnosed correctly. So what I'm using here is just a degreaser, a biodegradable degreaser that just helps clean it up. It may not, you can use, um, brake cleaner and all them kind of other kind of solvents and that sort of stuff but you know I like to gently remove stuff like this okay so once you've done your bit of cleaning it's on to removing your pressure plate from your engine now this one just came with some allen bolts so it's all pretty simple I believe they're six or seven mil apologies for not for not quite remembering it but I'm going to write a full list um, in the link in the description to tell you exactly what is what so you just go around the edges and release it leave one at the top so it doesn't drop on your face and um, try and anticipate the weight of it unlike me who knew it was going to be heavy but really didn't realize how heavy it was going to be you might need to pry it off with a crowbar or a screwdriver um, but just keep your finger in the middle and hopefully this shouldn't happen oh yep yeah, once again always remember safety first goggles and all that stuff very important okay so these are the two clutches and this is a good time to make sure they match up with your new one now, as you can see the one on the left is my old one with that shiny greasy residue that's brake fluid being leaked onto the the, the brake disc itself and just turning it into mush as you can see there's, there's there's nothing of it when you look at it you know clutches are not meant to look anything like that so in my case is a little bit different the clutch was slipping because there was fluid getting onto it now this could have been an oil seal or anything but this I knew was brake fluid from the Simpsons it was giving me. So here was the new one, the original one. That's what a clutch is supposed to look like. You don't want to contaminate that with anything that's coming from the old clutch. So do your best to clean that as best as possible. Now this is a good time to have a look at your clutch and to make sure the same. And remember the way they go in, the way they're fitted together. Now this is fitted with the lumpy side going into the flywheel housing and the flat side butted up towards the engine. That's how this one is, um, this how this is orientated. But it's good to remember what you've got to do and what you haven't got to do. Okay, so with your car all exposed, remember mine had leaking fluid all over it. So with my degreaser, I just started to clean up and degrease all the area around it. Like I said, it's all biodegradable, so this ain't going to cause no problem. There was a good drain nearby um, and to deal with all this sort of stuff. So yeah, just, just, just start cleaning up around it. I use a little wire brush because there was obviously some brake residue, uh, brake, brake disc, not brake disc, clutch disc residue. So I just started to clean up around there. So clean it thoroughly. I was cleaning it for about 20, 25 minutes. Just make sure you've got everything totally clean. Now this was the main culprit. This is built, this is a built in, what they call concentric slave clutch. Basically it's the slave within this inside the gearbox. It it activates the pressure plate, it comes out when you put your foot down, releases the pressure plate and uh, allows you to change gears. So, but this is what was leaking in my scenario. So pull it out, replace it. It should come with your clutch kit. As you can see, I'm just cleaning up in there, just taking my time and using a wire brush and just, just scrubbing it up because I don't want any of this stuff to go onto my new clutch. So just scrubbing it up, making sure it's you know, as clean as possible. You're not going to get it to be brand new, but you know, a little bit of effort goes a long, 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 long way. So there's just, as you can see that input shaft there, you've got to check the seals, make sure that's not leaking and fitting in a new clutch is just simple as just replacing it, just taking it out and replacing it. Those bolts are three nine mil bolts. So just pull them out and just, just replace it. It's really simple. I'm not sure of the torque specs, but you can find them elsewhere. But you know, I know how to do them by now. Now, what I've done again is that these uh, flywheels come with like a, an agent to stop it from rusting. So you've got to clean that off. Once again, I'm using the same degrees that I've used to clean it, clean everything else up to clean this up. So we're putting on the clutch plate and flywheel here. Come up a bit, a little bit. As like you can see, on, yeah. you locate it with the pins and just, just, just kind of knock it into place so it holds there. 
Then one at a time, you put the Allen bolts in. As you can see I'm doing here. And I've used a 60 mil socket just to center the disc. You will need to center the disc, the, the clutch, uh, the clutch plate itself because if you don't center the clutch plate you won't be able to line up your gearbox to put it in so make sure you've got it centered and you can actually get it in there do it in a star shaped format and tighten it up to torque specifications like i said i kind of knew how tight it's got to be so you know i've done these things before so i was all right but you may if you if you really are unsure get a torque wrench and do it to torque specification Okay, so now we put in some um, anti-seize anti on the uh, input shaft. And now we're back under the car with the gearbox with the help of the jack. Now going in should be a lot easier than coming out. When I say it should be a lot easier because you should have got a little bit of a feel and experience of what you're trying to do. Now bearing in mind you're trying to aim it up with the center of the clutch and, and slide it into place. You might need to twist it a little bit because you know it's like finding the socket. You've got to twist it around, maybe a little bit left and right, rock it backwards and forwards before you actually find the center of the hole itself. Once you find the center of the hole, you'll feel it slide in maybe an inch, an inch and a half. That's when you know it's in play. Whenever you use your, as you can see, that blue axle stand there is there supporting the gearbox. The gearbox isn't just hanging in by itself, so that that's actually supporting the gearbox. Once you've done that. You can start to do your bolts up just start tightening it up get whatever ones you can get in get the longest one just to bring it a little bit closer and start and start closing it up unfortunately this is where my battery died <laughs> so this is the next day and i've got a new helper which is my son Got him grafting. Sit, son. Work for your grub. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> okay, so we're on to the dry shaft because we're finishing off what we didn't complete yesterday because we got the gearbox screwed in, but there was still quite a few things not quite right. So um, put your dry shaft back on. Not like that, falling off. Get your spline socket and put it all back together. So basically what we're doing is just a reverse of what we did before. You know, we're just starting to put things back together, put plugs back on, and uh, just, just reverse everything what we did before. So this is the top of the starter motor. Everything's still disconnected. Connect your slave pipe, your clutch uh, fluid pipe, and put that little clip pin that holds it in. Now later on you will have to bleed this, which I'm gonna try and do a video. It was a bit tough at the time, because it was a bit late. But um, I'll see what I can do. Now start to fix back all your gear linkages. This is where the impact socket really comes in handy. Because it's just bang, 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 plug and play. You can see there. Look. It's all simple stuff. As you can see, the, the, the bolts on the gearbox mount was all done. That's part of the footage that was actually missed in the initial video. But, you know, it's all, it's all um, pretty simple stuff. Just jack up and locate and, and put it back together okay there's the uh the other third bolt that holds in that part of the linkage there which i do most of by hand and then the rest with my mini ratchet make sure it's reasonably tight you don't have to over tighten it now this is the earth uh strap as you can see that's just going back on again get my head out of the way to be honest, fitting up took me about, I reckon it took me a quarter of the time that it did to take off. You know, just because you're a bit more familiar with it and I think you're a bit more anxious just to get it over and done with. But, you know, take your time and make sure you get do it, put back everything that's supposed to be put on or you will have problems and all the rest of it. So yeah, you slide that clamp back on and slide them locking clips in. Give your gears back. Same thing with both of them. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to put it all back together. This is what I found. Once you got the knack of it and where you was, it was a lot easier to put it back together and to mind map everything. And hopefully this video will just help people just remember the things they have or haven't missed. I wish I had another camera to actually um, show you a few more shots and get you a bit more closer and in depth into um, what was actually going on and what I was seeing. So here we are again. We're putting back on, let's see what we're putting back on, so I don't quite remember it. We're putting back on the um, the live terminal, back onto the actual starter motor itself. There we go. It's 
all very, very simple stuff. Like it's a little bit fiddly in there because it's a bit tight for space, but it's, once again, there's another 30 mil socket. Just put it on and um, just get through it, you know. Just watch how the curve of the wires, if you get ever, if you ever get lost with where the wires go, just look at the natural curve of them because they will have their own kind of shape and identity towards them. So we're clipping back on the starter motor. So that's all done up. And it's got, it's had a little plastic cap, which I didn't actually, I don't think I actually showed you when I actually removed it before, but it's got a plastic cap that needs to be removed, but you put that back on just to protect it. There we are. No? Must have done it earlier. Okay, so now where are we? We are, we've put on a few bits and pieces. We put the clamp on for the, uh, the that, that little black thing to, that holds all the cable looms in. And it's just, like I said, it's just reversing everything you've done, putting on all back, all your plugs, and you know, checking, double checking, and, and making sure. So we slid that black uh, loom holder in, and just get all your wires back in there nice and tidy. Just work it, it'll go in. Just take your time, try not to pinch anything, you know, within reason, and then it should go back the way it virtually came off. I'm just wiping off because a little bit of brake fluid leaked on a few things. Okay, so it should look back, it should look kind of how you feel how you started. So we're clamping on the power steering pipes. Okay. Now what like I said, what I did before was I left all the bolts on where they were before. So I didn't have to search them. The ones I could leave I left, the ones I couldn't do, I kept them separately inside the car. But for the most part you can put them on and it makes saves a lot of um drama later on. Okay, so we're just tightening up that clamp that holds on that black thing. I think I've got this a bit back to front, actually. But yeah, so I've just shown you what happened before because I've collected it on a few different cameras. Once all your stuff is tightened up inside, do your wheel up, put your air box back, same as before. And the sequence, you can see what I'm doing here. Got your four 10 mil bolts and get a helper, get a helper to come and do some work for you. So like I said before, it's just a matter of putting everything back together. You know, I do want to show you step by step how to put it back because it's very similar to taking it off and I'll only be repeating myself. So, um, yep, yeah, just, just, just start putting things back together, sticking things back together, remember where everything goes and, you know, just take your time. Don't rush too much and try not to forget anything because you are playing with your car that you may be driving with your families and, and you know, you really, safety is paramount. So, you know, at the end, always check tires, wheels and make sure everything's right, you know, just, just as best as you can. So we're putting the airbags box back on here. You can see, pretty easy stuff. And all the other, you know, you've got to remember, don't forget to all the other little hoses that go onto it as well. You know, some of them have got slightly different setups. Now there's always that hidden little bolt around the back there that attaches to the battery. Make sure you clamp that down, put a bit of anti-seize. For some reason, it gets a bit rusty down there. And tighten up your air mass hose. Pull, pull your plugs back together. See, all of this is simple stuff. Like I said before, putting it back together seems to be a lot quicker when you're at this stage. So the badge goes back in, come and be the right way. Come on, <laughs> wake up. So um, yeah, make sure everything's all right. Clamp your terminals down, all simple stuff. You've been here before. Then once you're happy and everything's tight and the way it's supposed to be, release the card down to the floor. And that's how you do your clutch. <laughs> Thanks for watching, comment, rate, subscribe. And if you want to watch the reaction of, and the test drive afterwards, watch the next video. That's how I knew it was a clutch and not the flywheel. If there was more kind of banging noises and stuff like that, then... Whoa, it banging noises. You need to calm down, Dad. You need to calm down. Bro. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> If I heard if I heard some more banging noises, or... where you going? Hey, where you going? Where are you going? <laughs> where are you going? Stop, stay here. <laughs>
my son's a scumbag. <laughs>